How about eating a banana with mayo? Dipping pickles in peanut butter? These food combinations do sound pretty wild, but how do they taste? Well, give them a try, and Oreos with mustard might become your favorite dish. Okay, stay with me here. Tomatoes and peanut butter. Put several slices of tomato on a piece of bread and spread some peanut butter over this sandwich. Or just slather a thick layer of peanut butter over a slice of tomato. This taste combination is surprisingly popular with many foodies. Nutella and French fries. Salt tends to enhance flavors. That's why if you dip your French fries in Nutella, the famous hazelnut spread will taste sweeter and nuttier. Yes, the pun was intended. Another way to enjoy your french fries even more is to wash them down with chocolate milk. Banana and bacon. Salty, crispy bacon combined with sweet, carb-heavy banana makes a perfect mix. Put these ingredients on a slice of bread, add some peanut butter, voila! Your perfect sandwich is ready. Pickles and ice cream. Well, I admit this combination might not be just for everyone, but there are foodies who find this unusual mix of salty and sweet, vinegary and milky, strangely alluring. Cheddar cheese and apple pie. These days, you can surprise no one by serving sliced cheese together with fresh apples. But since these products get along quite well, why don't you take it one step further? They say the idea of adding cheddar cheese to apple pies first appeared in England, And after that, it spread all over the world. French fries and honey. If you want to turn your French fries experience into something different and more exciting, honey will do the trick. Its sweet flavor will complement the fast food saltiness. No wonder some restaurants have honey among other dipping options. Banana and mayo. Nope, by no means do I encourage you to squeeze a healthy dollop of mayonnaise on a peeled banana and stuff it into your mouth. Instead, try sandwiching a sliced banana between two pieces of bread and coat it with a bit of mayo. You might be in for a pleasant surprise. Chocolate and chips. This salty sweet combination tastes amazing. No wonder chocolate covered chips are a thing. And many brands have already added this mix to their product lines. Burger and jam. These days, you can order this combo in most restaurants, and no one will think you're a weirdo. Well, mostly no one. More and more people choose this option over the regular one with ketchup. Popcorn and milk. Some unique individuals replace breakfast cereal with popcorn. They add milk and claim that this dish tastes no worse than its more widespread and popular alternative. Care to try? White chocolate and red caviar. They say this unlikely food combo was created by a famous chef. He was amazed at how the salty caviar softened the sweetness of the white chocolate. If you're a fan of sweet, salty tastes, you're going to love it. Peanut butter and pickles. Let's say you aren't too enthusiastic about dipping pickles into sturdy peanut butter. Then try combining these ingredients in a sandwich. In this case, the vinegary flavor of the pickles will dilute the stickiness of the peanut butter. Watermelon and salt. Those who have never tried this taste combination often think that salt rids watermelon of its sweetness. But the truth is quite the opposite. A pinch of salt will only enhance the flavor. Mango and chili pepper. If you're a spicy food lover, this combination might catch your fancy. You can sprinkle some hot chili pepper on a sliced mango and enjoy the bird. Peanut butter and bacon. Remember that banana and bacon combo? It's time to replace the banana with some peanut butter. Its smoothness will contrast with the crispiness of the bacon. Careful, you might get addicted fast. Ice cream and hot sauce. The most effective way to put out the fire caused by spicy food in your mouth is to drink some milk. Then why not step it up a notch? Drizzle some spicy sauce over your vanilla ice cream to please your adventurous soul. Chocolate and avocado. It's not only about adding a bit of chocolate to your avocado toast. You can also make a mouth-watering avocado and chocolate milkshake. Then the buttery texture of avocado will perfectly complement the flavor of chocolate. Burger and peanut butter. Ooh. Burgers with jam are more of a sweet meat salty combination. But burgers with peanut butter are a salt with more salt kind of situation. 
But instead of spreading melted peanut butter all over your burger, you have to add it while making beef patties, and your burgers are bound to become juicier. Oreos and mustard Those who have tried this food combo promise that the flavors go with each other amazingly well. Scratch away an Oreo cookie frosting and replace it with German mustard. You won't regret it. Peanut butter and mayo While it's one of the most bizarre combinations you can imagine in a sandwich, it has a long history. People started to mix peanut butter, rich in proteins, and mayo, full of fats, during tough times. But later, the sandwich stuck around once people realized it was actually delicious. Pizza and honey Hot honey can make an unexpected but undeniably awesome pizza topping. For example, it's a great way to balance the excessive amount of salt coming with, let's say, pepperoni. So, if you cook pizza at home, put some pepperoni and peppers on top of it. Then coat it with honey. (laughs) You can thank me later. Olive oil and ice cream To get a mega-delicious salty-sweet combo, sprinkle some olive oil and a bit of sea salt on the top of your vanilla ice cream. Really, go for it! Peanut butter and sriracha Yet another unexpected combination of two seemingly incompatible ingredients. But in fact, the sweet aftertaste of sriracha will make the sticky peanut butter taste more interesting. And the butter, in turn, will take the edge off the sriracha's spiciness. Green apples and salsa You might have tried mangoes or pineapples mixed with salsa sauce. But then, why should it be any different with green apples? Their slightly sour taste is perfect for spicy dishes. It does offset some heat, but at the same time, their flavor adds a strong and a bit bitter taste to the mix. Strawberries and balsamic This is a tried-and-true Italian combination that works amazingly well. The savoriness of the vinegar makes strawberries taste sweeter. It also complements their juicy nature. Watermelon and feta No classic Greek salad can go without feta. But this cheese can taste no worse when you combine it with fruit, watermelon in particular. The dense structure and saltiness of feta will add extra flavor to the juicy red goodness. Peanut butter, jelly, and goldfish crackers sandwich Now, peanut butter and jam have long been a classic. But why goldfish crackers? True foodies know that this component fills in all the remaining gaps. Your sandwich gets a satisfying crunch. It becomes more savory. And the crackers are just salty enough to balance the sweetness of the jelly. Basil and strawberry I've already mentioned the benefits of mixing strawberries with balsamic vinegar. But strawberries and basil are just as good. You can test this combination while making lemonades and other drinks. Basil and strawberry frozen yogurt taste just as delicious. Pickle brine and chicken Cooking chicken in pickle brine helps keep the meat juicy. At the same time, this method preserves the natural flavor of poultry meat. Another benefit? You don't need to use salt in the process. The brine is already salty enough. Hummus and dried cranberries After dipping your cracker in hummus, Top it with several dried cranberries. They make a world of difference by adding a tiny bit of tang. Hello, your luxury bag package has arrived. We have a super romantic recipe for you. It'll especially be great for Valentine's Day or your someone special's birthday. Breakfast could not get any cuter than this. Now this hack is going to take your veggie sandwiches to a whole other level. Just be careful with the boiling hot oil. Fill the fried dough pocket with your favorite vegetables and bon appetit! Oh, this video is making me hungry already! You might want to write down the ingredients in your recipe book for this one. You know, just to remember everything later. One color is not enough, by the way. If you want this cookie to be a joyful burst of color, that is, Don't worry, the colors are going to be bright and gorgeous after they're baked. Make sure not to burn them. I somehow always manage to do that. Cookies and milk, everyone? Potatoes must be one magical vegetable, wouldn't you agree? Because there are probably more than a thousand different dishes you can make with them.
and they're all delicious. There are two types of people at a cafe, those who get a slice of cake or those who get a cookie. But I personally get both. Talk about having a sweet tooth, am I right? We already made colorful cookies, so why not make a rainbow cake now? Are you throwing a big party at your home soon? Then this dish is just for you. Because it's super easy to prepare, it's big, it's filling, and it's delicious. Oh, and did I mention it probably would take 15 minutes to prepare? Look at the cheese melt. Makes my mouth water. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Vegetables have a bad reputation, you know. Most people think they're boring and tasteless. But we're here to fix that common misconception. Something can be both nutritious and yummy at the same time. Take these carrot rolls, for example. They could be a great alternative if you're not fond of eating sushi. Just make sure to dip them in soy sauce for the full experience. Here's a quick meal you can prepare just with everyday breakfast items that you already have in your fridge. And it's super fresh and healthy. Perfect dinner for hot summer nights if you ask me. Add the topping of your choice and enjoy. Another example of how vegetables are tasty gifts from Mother Nature. This kind of looks like a forest, wouldn't you agree? The key here is to leave no empty space behind. By the way, having a good oven is key if you want to experiment in the kitchen. Let's say it's the middle of the night. There's no takeout place left open, but you're craving some fast food. This is just the recipe for that. Come on, admit it. You thought this was going to be a version of pizza, right? Anyone want crunchy pasta? This is healthier than store-bought chips, you know. By the way, here's a fun fact about pasta that not many people know. The first reports of people eating pasta actually came from China. Speaking of sausages, I'm on a fun fact roll here. So here's one about hot dogs for you. The world record for hot dog eating is 76. Let's just hope the person who broke it was okay after eating them. Anyway, back to our delicious hot dog egg crepes. Well, if you have a better name for these, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. From the looks of it, that avocado needs a bit more time to ripen up. But since it's going into the blender, that shouldn't be a big problem. I suggest you blend that for a couple of minutes to achieve a smooth paste with no clumps. I assume that's cream cheese. Who needs a dipping bowl, am I right? Great for Super Bowl season. You won't need to do the dishes after having guests over. I prefer my popcorn with melted butter. Well, that goes for corn on the cob, too. I can already tell this is going to taste amazing. Hey, they should start selling these in movie theaters as well. This will not be one of your regular fried potatoes, people. Trust me. I know you have the urge to cut small cubes, but make sure to keep the potato in one piece. Otherwise, this won't work. Have you ever heard that Cleopatra supposedly took milk baths to keep her skin looking young and healthy? Well, don't get me wrong, these milk ice cubes are not for that. That's one way to cool down coffee. Somebody's making a real mess in the kitchen. Why not put the whole bag in the water? It'll be much safer and cleaner. That's one sharp knife you got there. But here's another way you can use it. Looks like you're going to have to get your hands dirty. And in some cases, touching raw meat with your bare hands may not be a good idea. That's where this cold water hat comes in handy. Pun intended. Sometimes you might not have the time to make dough. In those cases, using bread would work perfectly fine to prepare delicious snacks. 
You know what? This is not fair. I can't continue my diet plan anymore, especially after learning about incredible recipes like this one. That may look like a plastic sheet, but it's actually rice paper, so very much edible. These chips could be a healthier alternative for your kid's lunch bag. Trust me, there's no way they won't like how these taste. This next quick recipe is going to bring a whole other level to frozen yogurt. We're adding berries here, but feel free to pick any fruit you want. I call these frozen yogurt crackers. Do you have a milk frother at home? If your answer is yes, then great, because that's all you need to prepare instant banana milk for yourself. Yep, you don't even need a glass. You can put them in an ice bowl to keep your drink cold and fresh. Are we making chocolate crepes? Count me invested. By the way, any type of chocolate bar will work for this. The trick here is to have enough oil in the pan as well as to heat it beforehand. Add some powdered sugar on top to make it look like it's out of the hands of a Michelin star chef. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. Something sweet? Check! Now it's time for another savory recipe. You can use both mashed or grated potatoes to make this one. The choice is up to you. Just make sure they're freshly prepared. Add a cup of flour and an egg. Then cook the mixture until it's golden brown. Your potato waffles are ready to be served. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. When you're hungry or peckish, the kitchen is no doubt your favorite place to be. And you probably think you know your kitchen pretty well. In actuality, maybe not as well as you might think. You see, there are quite a few hidden secrets in your kitchen you're likely unaware of. First, we're going to take a look at something with holes in it. Now, we're not talking about Swiss cheese, though now you mention it, all this kitchen talk is making me hungry. Instead, take a look at the knives in your kitchen. You may notice that some of them have holes or dimples across the blade. You won't just find these features on one type of blade either. There are quite a few knives in your kitchen that likely have these holes or dimples. These can include the paring knife, the bread knife, and of course, everyone's favorite kitchen knife, the chef's knife. This feature isn't just decorative though. There are a few excellent reasons for these holes and dimples. One of the main reasons is to reduce cutting friction. Think about it. Not all foods are easily sliced. Say you're trying to make a delicious pumpkin curry. Of course, you've got your main ingredient. Maybe you want to add some carrot, among other vegetables, all of which are pretty thick and hard to cut through. Pick yourself a knife with some holes in it. Those holes will help reduce the friction between that tough-to-slice food and your blade. These knives will also be lighter and therefore kinder on your wrist if you plan on cutting food for an extended time. The holes in your blade mean less steel which means less weight, so you'll be making cleaner cuts in your food with ease. Another use for these holes is to hang your knives up, significantly larger ones that are harder to store in a drawer. Having it hung up at arm's length of the kitchen bench for a commonly used knife like a meat cleaver will also be convenient. Of course, when you're cutting your food, you want to be doing it so on a chopping board, which, you guessed it, has a kitchen secret of its own. You'll notice, in most chopping boards, there's also a hole at the top of the board. Sure, this can be handy for when you need to carry it around or hang it up in your kitchen, as you did with your cleaver. But there's an additional purpose behind this feature, which probably hasn't occurred to you before. Once you've sliced up your herbs and vegetables, all that delicious flavor you're going to be adding to your dish, hover the hole at the top of the chopping board over the pot, pan, or whatever it is you're cooking in. Take your knife and gently push your ingredients through the hole for a clean transfer from the board. Give it a try! A clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I was just cutting some onions. But did you know there is, in fact, a secret way to cut onions without the tears? First of all, it's important to know that your onion isn't a hooligan. That's not why you end up crying when you cut into it. The onion skin contains amino acids, and when you cut into it, the chemicals produced from the damage you incur are released into the air and end up stinging your eyes, kind of like payback. The best way to stifle the production of these tear-inducing chemicals is to cool the onion, either by freezing it or running it under cold water. Either way, you should now be able to cut through your onion with dry eyes and a smile. Keep the water running for this upcoming kitchen secret, and we need to fill the ice cube trays next. It seems almost impossible to refill your ice cube trays without making a complete mess of the water. But the design of your standard ice cube tray lets you fill it with ease and a dry kitchen bench. Rather than filling each well one by one, direct the water onto the flat area in between four ice cube wells. It'll channel the water evenly into each well without overfilling and splashing over the sides. If you're after a speedier method of filling your ice cube tray, tilt it onto an angle and run the water from the top two wells. The water will run down the tray like a waterfall and fill up each well with speed and relative cleanliness. Of course, it's still a challenging journey carrying your ice cube tray from the kitchen tap to the freezer. We haven't discovered a secret for that yet, other than, well, an automatic ice cube maker. Now, let's get out of the freezer and heat things up a bit. However, did you know that spicy food isn't actually hot? At least not in the traditional sense of the word. A chemical compound in hot peppers called capsaicin tricks your brain into experiencing that burning sensation in your mouth and throat. So, no need to worry, you are not really on fire. Though, it may feel like it. Your first instinct is to probably grab a tall glass of water and wash it down like you're dousing a house fire. But you do not want to do this. The water will only spread the capsaicin around more and make it worse. Instead, dairy is your secret best friend when you need relief from an overly spicy pepper. Most milk products contain a protein called casein, which can help wash away the capsaicin. So, as long as you have a glass of milk candy, go ahead and test yourself by seasoning your meal with some challenging spices. Speaking of seasoning, the most common seasoning ingredient to any meal is undoubtedly salt. But have you ever grabbed the half-full salt shaker, turned it upside down, and despite shaking it and tapping the bottom, barely any grains come out? Hmm. Sooner or later, salt starts to clump together. It tends to happen because salt absorbs water vapor in the air, and eventually, it can attract enough that the salt partially dissolves and sticks together. Well, the secret solution to this has been under your nose this whole time, and you probably never realized it. Have you ever noticed some grains of rice in the salt shaker on the table at your favorite restaurant? They're not there to add flavor. It's done because the rice absorbs water even faster than the salt, keeping the salt dry for longer. You can do this with the salt in your kitchen, too. Just add some uncooked long grain rice to your shaker, and you'll notice your salt coming out of it with ease from now on. But now, let's talk about something you might be flavoring with your now easy to use salt shaker, or rather, what tends to sprout from it. Potatoes are one of the most diverse foods on the planet. As Samwise Gamgee once put it, boil them, smash them, stick them in a stew. But if you don't get around to cooking your potatoes as fast as a hobbit surely would, you'll likely notice some shoots start to sprout. Soon enough, your potato looks like something out of a scary alien movie. It's not an unnatural process, however. Like most things, reproduction is part of a potato's cycle of existence, and sprouting is part of the process of creating a new potato. The speed at which your potato starts sprouting its shoots depends on its exposure to light, temperature, humidity levels, and how long it is left dormant for. So, if it's been sitting around for a while, it's likely going to have some sprouts. It's excellent if you plan to plant your potato. Of course, this is not so much the case if you plan to eat it. However, a secret to preventing potatoes from sprouting too early is to store them with your apples. The apple's ethylene gas prevents the sprouting process for longer. But don't store your potatoes with your onion. No, they won't make the potatoes cry. 
but they will have the opposite effect and cause them to sprout. So you see, sprouts on a potato aren't nearly as unsavory as mold on bread. When the bread is fresh, however, one of the most popular uses is to create toast. Almost every home has a toaster. Mine does. It might surprise you to know that there's likely a secret compartment inside your very own toaster. What's inside the compartment may not be too exciting, but it happens to be a critical feature that not many people know exists. It's the crumb tray, whereas the name suggests all the crumbs and debris from your toast end up here. To find this hidden feature, you need to look for it between your toaster's upper and lower body. Now, it's essential to keep this tray clean. Not only does it keep your kitchen cleaner, but it also reduces the risk of your toaster being a fire hazard. Well, that would be crummy. Those are some unveiled kitchen secrets we bet you never knew. Now you're ready to reacquaint yourself with your kitchen and make a meal with all these handy secrets in mind. Yep, now I'm hungry. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious, and it makes sense. But what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon-looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen-permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini-experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all, but if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. 
Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. What about the white area under the potato peel? Eat or toss? This area is also like dark bruise marks, but it's not black. If the outer layer of the potato looks normal, that odd looking white knot is not mold. The moldy potatoes deteriorate. They'll get softer, wrinkled, or squishy. As long as the exterior of this potato appears clean and regular, there's probably no harmful microbial growth inside of it. These strikingly white areas can be shaped due to potatoes being bruised, possibly in the field during the harvesting period. To sum up, you can eat it. There's also an issue of white smears coming out when we slice potatoes. You see the marks on the cutting board? Experts say that some potatoes have a higher level of water and starch content. As a result, your cutting board gets a bit messier than usual. No need to worry about it. I'm going to carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I want to know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Today, we're going to reveal some fast food secrets. By now, we've all learned that we never get the exact same food that we see in ads. But uh, there is way more stuff to know about how fast food companies make us buy stuff. 
It's like they make your brain order. Ooh, I've seen something delicious. Get that for me ASAP. Ooh. Well, imagine entering a food court and smelling all that beautiful food. As you walk by, one smell stands out from the others. Fresh baked Cinnabon. Yeah, they do bake them. But the smell that reaches your nose doesn't come straight from the oven. Cinnabon bakery chains place their ovens near their front door to attract customers. That smell isn't just coming from the oven, though. The staff heats baking sheets with sprinkled cinnamon and brown sugar to keep the sweet aroma in the air all day long. These smells make you feel hungry, even though your stomach isn't empty. Let me introduce you to aroma marketing. The aim here is to make products irresistible. Did you notice the unique scent of crispy fries from McDonald's? It's the same smell in all stores worldwide. This is a pre-planned strategy. You smell these aromas and your body increases ghrelin production. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone, by the way. Your stomach produces it. So yeah, these smells can stimulate your appetite. Another strategy to lure customers is to use the power of colors. They also trigger your appetite. Think about the most famous fast food restaurant logos and the colors used inside and in their branding. Slogans, mascots, or meals can change, but nearly all well-known fast food chains go with a similar color palette. There's no coincidence. Research proves that these warm colors activate your hunger. Also, they grab your attention. Think about it as a traffic light or a stop sign. You kind of want to stop. Now, in the past, people burned many calories to find food. Are you going to hunt some animals and gather some herbs? No. You just need to walk into a cafe around the corner to get your food in 5 minutes. Since this food is not expensive and is served fast, your brain's reward system favors it. Convenience is also addictive, like sugar. Brands are aware of this, and this leads us to the next fact. Businesses know how our brains work and manipulate them. If you're asked if you want to have a larger size of fries or drink, it's likely you'll say yes. Every brand earns millions of dollars just by upsizing the menus, for instance. Upsizing costs less, but oops, you've actually just spent more than you intended. The pricing format and dollar menu are also a part of this trick. You see numbers advertised as only $5.89. It's almost 6, but your brain associates it with the number 5 because you see 5 written there, not 6. Plus, the currency signs are sometimes small and hard to read. You go for a a la carte option, but they're placed on the sides and extra value meals flash out. When you look at the prices, a place in your brain called the orbitofrontal cortex takes control. Research shows that when a person buys something, knowing there's a better deal among the options, the brain activity shows signs of pain. There's a good offer, but if you take it, you end up eating more. Maybe you only want to buy a burger and you end up with fries and a drink. On the other hand, it's good if that was your intention all along. I can't argue with that. Do you know that your burgers are wrapped in grease-repelling paper? This means that this paper might contain harmful chemicals. Researchers tested samples taken from 400 containers and wrappers from fast food chains. They discovered that 38% of sandwich and burger wrappers contain fluorine, a rather toxic substance. And it's not just sandwich and burger wrappers. They found that 56% of dessert and bread wrappers and 20% of french fry sleeves contain fluorine. So, sadly, not just fast food, but also its packaging can be harmful. Now here's another trick. When you're on your way to get a snack from the drive-thru, The machines will recognize your license plate, and based on your previous purchases, they will flash similar options in front of you. Another thing about drive throughs is that they place cameras there. Sometimes you just talk through the buzzer. You can't see the staff, but beware, they can see you in some chains. Those use devices like magnetic sensors to notice vehicles. Then employees get notified via their headsets. They press a special button to activate their mics. Without sensors, cameras, and windows, how could they see you coming? They aren't psychic. Don't worry much, though. Employees probably don't care what you do. I mean, they have a million other things to do instead. Now, let's assume you get a burger from the drive-thru. You have grilled meat in it. Wait a minute, is it really grilled? Shocking news, they add a solution. 
sort of a sauce with a grilled flavor to the meat and make those fake grill lines on it. They can't grill meat at such short notice, but people like this look, so they go with this option. Speaking of faking it, fast food is very processed. I mean, the flavor in the burgers and nuggets is often gone in the process level of processed. To compensate for this, companies add special chemicals to give the food taste and aroma. Now earlier, we talked about the tricks companies use in drive throughs It's time to reveal the secrets of self-serve kiosks. You tend to spend more when you order your food via these kiosks. Restaurants expect that you'll spend about 20% more. The system in these kiosks is designed to upsell. Cashiers ask you questions, but while using a self-service kiosk, you don't feel rushed or maybe judged for your orders and choices. A lawsuit was filed in the U.S. about one fast food chain's tuna sandwich. It turns out that the ingredient advertised as tuna had no tuna in it. This was concluded by tests run in independent labs with multiple samples taken from this chain in California. The fast food chain said the claims didn't reflect the truth. So we'll just wait and see. A fact about nuggets is here, and it's proven. This one might be hard to digest, but they often don't contain chicken. Hmm. Scientists have tested them, and what they found is often only 50% meat. Apparently, there's a thing, sort of a process, called mechanically separated meat. And the remaining product comes from there. Fancy eating a blizzard cone or parfait from DQ? No one can stop you, but you should know that technically, what you're eating isn't ice cream. Dairy Queen soft serve has 5% milk fat. The FDA says that a product has to have at least 10% of milk fat to be considered ice cream. But the company isn't keeping this fact to itself. It's written on its website. Now, what about discount coupons or free products? It's all part of the plan. Some people go to restaurants with coupons. They think, I might also get this or that since I'm already here. Most of them buy something else. And the item they buy is often more expensive than the free item on their coupon. Now, sometimes people want to go with healthier options in fast food chains. They might miss the point that healthy might not be healthy at the end of the day if the person orders a sauced chicken salad. They might end up having more calories than they would get from a burger. On top of this, healthier options often cost more in comparison to regular items. Anyway, this is an ever-lengthening list. After all, the fast food industry is huge. We're talking billions of dollars. Maybe that's why it comes with a lot of secrets behind the scenes. Hmm, we've been talking about all this, and now I want to order a burger. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Everyone has their own morning rituals to cheer the body up after sleep. Apart from exercising and hot showers, the first food that you put into your hungry tummy can define the rest of the day. That's why it's good to know which foods are just not meant to be eaten on an empty stomach. Well, at least we have bananas. This fruit is a great choice for a lazy breakfast, right? Wrong! No matter how fresh and healthy it is, raw bananas can bring chaos to your stomach if you eat them at the wrong time. This fruit is rich in magnesium, which may lead to digestive issues. Also, in some cases, it can cause blood pressure fluctuations. But if you're still a dedicated banana eater, try mixing it with oatmeal. It creates a lining in the stomach that prevents irritation caused by the naturally produced hydrochloric acid. Bananas go well with other healthy foods like porridge, peanut butter, dried fruits, or nuts for eating early in the morning. What could be better than a fresh, crispy croissant for breakfast? Many things, actually. Cakes, pastries, pizza, and other bakeries usually contain yeast, which can harm the stomach lining if eaten on an empty stomach. Also, bakery products may cause flatulence, so it's not the best food you want to eat first thing in the morning. But you can replace the regular white yeast bakery with sourdough whole grain bread. In fact, it's one of the best food choices right after waking up. This bread is rich in carbohydrates that are very important for a balanced diet and keeping your gut bacteria happy. A glass of fresh citrus juice looks very Instagram-friendly when standing on a fancy breakfast tray. But unfortunately, 
things don't look so glamorous inside your stomach. Fruit smoothies and juices are too rich in fructose, which may shock and overburden your sleepy pancreas and liver. Although they are great any time of the day, in the morning, citrus fruits should be consumed after eating something else. Otherwise, they may cause great harm to the body. The high content of fructose and fiber can make your metabolism work lazier during the day. And also, experts mm. don't recommend eating more than two oranges per day to avoid hurricanes in your tummy. If you can't imagine your morning without fruits, go for papaya or watermelon. They can help flush toxins out of your body and make you feel lighter during the day. Fresh salads are very good in most cases, but still, experts advised against eating raw vegetables on an empty stomach. After a long hour fasting, your tummy may find it too hard to digest the coarse fibers. So if you don't want to experience pain and discomfort, keep your salad for later hours. Let's talk about the hot water in the morning trend. You've probably seen a bulk of its variations. Bloggers suggest mixing the water with all sorts of things, from lemon juice and chia seeds to baking soda. Of course, each of these magic potions requires separate research and scientific approval. But most experts agree that one glass of pure lukewarm water in the morning is a great tool to inspire your bowel movement and prepare it for the day. On the other hand, it's not advised to drink cold beverages if your stomach is empty because they can damage the mucous membrane. This can make your digestive system work lazier or in some cases cause discomfort and an upset stomach. When it comes to your morning coffee, the rule is simple. If you want to stay healthy, never drink coffee on an empty stomach. When you do so, it stimulates the secretion of hydrochloric acid, which is harmful to your digestive system. Not only can it provoke gastritis from time to time, but also develop many health issues in the long term. Also, coffee boosts the level of cortisol, the hormone which controls our biological clock. It happens very quickly and the body needs to make an extra effort to balance the things back to a normal state. That's why experts recommend drinking coffee an hour after waking up, but you should eat something beforehand. Even a tiny slice of bread will be fine. If you like eating yogurt with granola or any other fermented milk products for breakfast, make sure to eat something safe before them. Ideally, you have to wait about an hour. Otherwise, dairy products can damage the good bacteria in your stomach and cause the effect opposite to what they're actually made for. But this recommendation doesn't apply to cheeses. If you want your digestive system to thank you, go for feta or cottage cheese. These good fats are just perfect for the morning. Goat cheese is also a nice idea. It's softer and tangier than most cow cheeses and it also tends to be slightly higher in fat and minerals and lower in lactose. Many people eat chocolate or protein bars for breakfast, but in fact, processed sugar is the champion among the worst breakfast choices. Any high sugar food and drink should be avoided just after waking up in the morning. But don't rush off to cut off the chocolate completely. It can help chase away the morning gloom and improve your mood during the day. Chocolate can promote positive feelings because it stimulates the production of hormones responsible for our good mood. That's why a reasonable amount of high-quality chocolate after breakfast can be beneficial for your well-being and help you switch to work mode. Keep in mind that darker chocolate contains more caffeine, while white chocolate has none. So, if you want to stay alert, go for 70% dark chocolate. Not only does it help you stay wakeful, but it's also a treasury of useful components like calcium, copper, potassium, antioxidants, and magnesium. Chili with jalapenos might taste delicious, but it's not the best choice for breakfast. Here's why. When you eat spicy food on an empty stomach, it irritates your vulnerable lining and makes your belly very unhappy. So if you don't want to risk suffering from an irritated stomach throughout the day, it makes sense to keep the chili for dinner. It may seem like all foods are bad on an empty stomach, but that's not the case. In fact, we have plenty of safe and healthy breakfast options that will help improve the functioning of your body. Take nuts, for example. These tiny power banks are rich in vitamins, minerals, proteins, and good omega-3 fatty acids. 
so eating them first in the morning can be very nutritious. They'll keep you feeling energized during the day and help fight overeating habits. Also, nut consumption can help maintain the pH balance in the stomach. But, of course, moderation is crucial because nuts are very fatty. Experts advise eating just one handful per day, which is approximately two tablespoons. Some recommend soaking nuts in water overnight to make them even more beneficial and easier to digest. The same technique works for dates, raisins, and other dried fruits and berries. If you're both worried about your weight and health, the perfect choice for breakfast is eggs. They can give a feeling of fullness without heaviness, which helps to control appetite during the day. They're also rich in proteins and low in calories. Just a couple of tablespoons of wheat germs before breakfast will provide you with a bunch of vitamins and folic acid. This superfood contains dietary fiber that helps your digestive system work smoothly. It's also reported to have some anti-aging properties. Here's another well-known superfood that can give you both a good mood and better digestion. Chia seeds! They're even more beneficial when consumed on an empty stomach. It's up to you whether to take them directly or along with water. When you consume honey after waking up, it can gently add some inspiration to a lazy bowel. Also, honey can boost the production of serotonin to help you feel good during the day. But first, make sure you're not allergic to honey. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Some of those potatoes you left in your pantry have turned green. Are they still safe to eat? When these vegetables come in contact with direct sunlight, they turn green because of a little thing called chlorophyll. It's a green pigment plants need to produce food during a process called photosynthesis. To prevent potatoes from turning green, you'll need to store them in a dark and well-ventilated area. While chlorophyll itself is harmless, once the amount of this substance increases in a potato, it triggers the appearance of another element called solanine. This is a substance found in tomatoes, eggplants, and most importantly, potatoes. Not only does it make these vegetables taste bitter, but it can also cause serious health problems, for example, related to digestion. Hmm. While it's best to refrain from eating green potatoes, you can always double-check if they are good to eat by tasting them. If you sense a taste of bitterness, it's best to throw them away. What about sprouted potatoes? Are they good to eat? Well, it depends. That substance solanine has a lot to do with it again. If a potato otherwise looks good and only has a couple of small sprouts, you can remove those and safely eat the vegetable. They won't be the best-looking potatoes, though. So if you want to cook a dish where you need neat vegetables, you might want to skip the slightly sprouted potatoes and use them for something else, like soups or mashed potatoes. But if your potato looks like it's grown arms and legs, <laughs> you'll be on the safe side if you throw it away. Solanine aside, it will also taste bitter, so you might end up cooking it for no good reason at all. Let's look at some other tips to help you improve your kitchen safety skills, like how you should wash fruits and vegetables with hard rinds, say melons or cucumbers. Simply running water over them may not be enough to get rid of all the nasty stuff on their surface. Best to use a sterilized scrub brush and some elbow grease to really get into those ridges and clean the vegetables properly. That way, the dirt and bacteria won't transfer from your veggies to your cutting knife or board. A fan of grilled meat? Might want to get a food thermometer to make sure you're always on the safe side. If you're an experienced cook, you might be able to visibly judge if the meat is ready. But if you're really not sure if the product is done, a thermometer will be your best friend. Specialists claim that whole cuts of meat need to reach a minimum internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit before you can serve them. Fish needs to reach 145 degrees, while ground meats need a minimum of 160. Poultry or pre-cooked meat, like hot dogs, need to be heated to at least 165 degrees. To safely store all the food you've bought for the rest of the week, you also need to make sure that your household devices are working properly and are set at the right temperatures. 
like your refrigerator temperature, for example, which should be at 40 degrees or lower. As for the temperature in the freezer, it should be 0 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Now, that thermometer I mentioned earlier can be of use here, too, if you need to check whether your appliances are working properly. Luckily, most of these devices come equipped with their own thermometers these days. Do you need to bring your own food to your neighbor's barbecue party? Make sure to keep it cool on the way. Meat, poultry, and seafood need to be transported at 40 degrees Fahrenheit at most. You can always use an ice box. Just make sure to place its cooling parts in the freezer the night before. The way you organize food in your fridge can affect its quality, too. Raw meat, for example, needs to be stored on the bottom shelf of your fridge. It's also best to keep it away from fresh produce and ready-to-eat dishes. Now, have you experienced a long power outage recently? Sorry, but all the food in your fridge needs to go. If your fridge was offline for only a couple of minutes, you're most likely safe. Otherwise, you'll need to get rid of all the perishable foods. When it comes to canned food, you also need to take into consideration its acidity levels. Products that are high in acidity, like tomatoes, grapefruit, and pineapple, can be stored for 12 to 18 months if unopened. Canned vegetables, meat, poultry, and fish can be stored for longer, anywhere between 2 to 5 years, if the storing conditions are right and if the can itself remains undamaged. If anything looks rusty or has bumps on it, remove it from your pantry. You also need to be careful with storing your acidic food, as you should never use reactive pans. You might know that aluminum is used a lot in cookware because it's good at conducting heat. But cooking or storing something in an aluminum pan might not be so good for your food. Tomato sauce, for example, can damage aluminum or cast iron plates, and that will show in both the taste and the color of your food. Non-reactive pans are your safe bet, so make sure you invest in a good quality stainless steel, enamel-coated, or glass set of pans. A lot of dishes taste better if you pre-marinate the ingredients. Just make sure to always marinate food in the refrigerator. If you leave it outside on your counter, it'll soon reach room temperature, and then bacteria will start to multiply. And it may be dangerous if you don't cook that product at a high enough temperature afterward. Also, never reuse the marinating liquid. Now, the first rule, whenever you're gathering tools to prep for dinner, multiple cutting boards for each type of food. One should be reserved for meat and seafood, while others should be divided between vegetables, fruit, and baked goods. It's the best way to avoid cross-contamination in the kitchen. And speaking of cutting boards, your best bet would be to invest in a good bamboo one. This material absorbs little to no moisture and isn't easily damaged by knives. It's way more resistant to bacteria than any other type of wood, and it also lasts longer. Not to mention the fact that it also looks really cool. Eggs can cause a lot of trouble if not stored correctly, but here are a couple of tips you can use. Fresh eggs are safe to eat for up to three weeks after purchase. Keep them in their original carton. Hard-boiled eggs need to be consumed within the week, no matter if they still have their shells on or not. Lastly, if you keep leftover egg dishes in your fridge, make sure you eat them within three to four days. Now, we all want our batter to be smooth and free of lumps, don't you? But overmixing can be bad for your dish, too. Way too much elbow grease can cause gluten to form in the flour, which will give you a really tough batter. The trick is to mix lightly just until the batter is homogenous. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason, you know? That's because you should be pairing a specific type of pasta with the texture of the sauce. Like pasta shells, for example, go better with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? Because the sauce is gathered inside the shell, making it easier to serve and eat. The ribbed outside surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. Next time you mess up a tray of cookies and end up burning them, you can save them with your trusty grater. Just grate off the blackened parts from the bottom after carefully removing the cookies from the tray. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in melted chocolate. <laughs> after the chocolate gets a chance to cool down, you'll be left with perfectly shaped pastries.
That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Wow, it's lunchtime. You choose a delicious looking piece of chicken, but oh no, it ends up on the floor instead of your mouth. You quickly pick it up and eat it anyway. Because there is the five second rule, you know. The bad bacteria simply won't have enough time to hop on your food off the floor if you're fast enough. But is it real or is it just an urban legend? Some folks like to credit the famous Genghis Khan, the founder and ruler of the Mongol Empire, for the whole thing. According to the tale, if food fell on the floor at banquets, it was fair game as long as Khan said so. His food was supposedly so special that it was good for anyone, no matter where it landed. Back in the day, people didn't know much about those pesky microorganisms and how they could make us sick. So, eating dropped food wasn't really considered taboo. They figured if they wiped off the visible dirt, it was good to go. And that's how the con rule came to be. Hey, maybe they just had outstanding immune systems. Meanwhile, let's fast forward to the queen of culinary TV herself, Julia Child. As she whipped up mouth-watering meals on her show, The French Chef, some viewers claimed they saw her drop lamb, chicken, or even a turkey on the floor. But in reality, it was a potato pancake that landed on the stovetop, not the floor. In the spirit of having some fun in the kitchen, Julia famously said, But you can always pick it up, and if you are alone in the kitchen, who is going to see? And just like that, the misremembered story became part of popular culture. In real life, when your food hits the floor, it's like a bacteria magnet. That chicken piece is bound to pick up some unwanted microbial hitchhikers. You just can't give your fallen lunch a quick sanitizing session like you would with your hands. As for the 5 second rule, it's not all so simple. Some foods may have a better chance of survival after taking a tumble. Researchers from Rutgers University discovered that moisture, surface type, and contact time all play a role in the degree of cross-contamination. Foods with high moisture levels, like juicy watermelon, are the biggest culprits for contamination. That means they attract more bacteria than any other food tested. And not all environments and surfaces are created equal. Carpet had a low transfer rate in the experiment. Stainless steel and wood had higher transfer rates. In a different study, researchers swabbed the floors around the University of Illinois in the lab, hall, dormitory, and cafeteria to see how many organisms they could find. They were surprised to see very few microorganisms. It was probably because most malicious bacteria like Salmonella, Listeria, or E. coli can't survive without moisture, and the floors were all dry. But even on dry, sterile surfaces, germs relocated onto cookies and gummy bears in less than 5 seconds. For some foods, it takes less than 1 second for the transfer to begin. So the 5 second rule doesn't really rule, after all. It's more of an urban legend and a psychological trick your mind plays on you. Experimental psychologists explain that when it comes to decision-making, we humans don't always go through a rigorous risk-benefit analysis. Nah, we rely on our brain's trusty sidekicks called heuristics. These little shortcuts help us make lightning-fast decisions based on whatever info we've got at hand. Sometimes these shortcuts can lead us in the wrong direction, though, like in the case of germs. Those are invisible little troublemakers, and food is real and valuable. So when you drop a precious piece of food on the floor, say, a yellow peanut M&M, your brain goes like, hey, I can't see any germs, so it must be safe to snatch it up. <laughs> Not every floor snack will make you sick, but it also depends on you. Our immune systems, especially in the very young and the very old, can be a bit more fragile and vulnerable. So it's crucial not to pass on this questionable habit to the little ones. Remember, they're always watching! Another popular food-related myth is that carbs are always bad for you. In reality, some carbs are pretty important because they're converted into fuel for our bodies. You can find those complex carbs, as they're called, in plant-based foods. They're the ones that keep our digestive system happy and our metabolism in check. The real villains are the simple carbs. Manufacturers add them to processed foods like starches and sugars. When we gobble them up, they quickly turn into blood sugar, causing all sorts of havoc. 
think sudden spikes, feeling hungry again in no time, and some more serious consequences for your health. The good carbs come packed with nutritional goodies, like fiber and bran, which makes them digest slower and release glucose gradually. To make smarter carb choices, try going for whole grain bread alternatives and swap soda for sparkling water. You can also try the plate method. Fill half your plate with fiber-rich, starch-free veggies. Reserve a quarter for starchy delights like potatoes or a fruity treat. And the last quarter is for proteins. Fish, poultry, beans, nuts, eggs, and lentils should become your new dietary besties. Now, frozen or canned fruits and veggies aren't useless like the rumor has it. Studies have shown that frozen, dried, juiced, or canned plant-based foods can be just as nutritious as their fresh counterparts. You just need to keep an eye out for any sneaky added ingredients like sugars, saturated fats, or sodium. High temperatures during the canning process can cause some vitamins, like C and B, to take a hit. But those vitamins can be a bit sensitive to heat and air in general, so they might leave even during regular cooking and storage at home. Some canned foods, like tomatoes and corn, actually release more antioxidants when they're heated up. Now, have you ever tried adding celery to your diet just because eating it is supposed to burn more calories than you take in? Experts say that negative calorie foods are nothing more than a fantastical idea. Sure, the process of munching and digesting celery burns a few calories, but not a significant amount. There may be around 10 calories in a hefty celery stick, but the body only uses one-fifth of that to process it. So it's still a calorie-plus situation. Plus, you'll unlikely survive just on celery, and it's often a gateway to more yummy foods like cream cheese or peanut butter. Hey, tell me about it. Meanwhile, high-fiber, water-dense fruits and veggies, like celery, can indeed have value as weight loss allies. They fill up your stomach and increase satiety, preventing you from gorging on more calories later. But they won't magically burn off the calories you've already consumed. Some people claim that certain foods or beverages make your body work harder. For example, your body needs to warm up cold water to a toasty 98 degrees Fahrenheit. But there's no solid research to support the idea that cold water drinkers burn significantly more calories. Maybe a measly 5 calories if you're lucky. Caffeine, guanine, taurine, and green tea extracts have been touted for their metabolism-boosting properties. But again, we're talking about a tiny boost that could potentially result in losing around 10 pounds over a year. So, looks like the best way to keep your calories under control is to consume fewer of them than you burn through exercise, not just digestion. Carbonated water isn't any worse than its still version. When carbon dioxide and water get together, they chemically react to create a weak acid called carbonic acid. It tickles the same nerve receptors in your mouth as mustard. That's why you get that delightful and prickly sensation. Although carbonated water is a bit acidic, drinking it won't make your entire body acidic. Your kidneys and lungs step in to remove any excess carbon dioxide from your system. And it's not terrible for your tooth enamel. One study found that sparkling mineral water had only a slight impact on enamel compared to still water. It was a whopping 100 times less damaging than a sugary soft drink. So keep your bubbly drink sugar-free, and you should be safe and healthy. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. From the iconic golden fries to a broken ice cream machine, here are 10 fast food secrets that the fast food industry doesn't really want you to know. Ah, chicken nuggets. Those golden crispy bites you can get from fast food chains. They're even on the menu of school lunches. What if I tell you that they aren't actually made entirely out of chicken? Researchers took chicken nugget samples from unnamed fast food chains and analyzed them. They said that one sample, for instance, contained 50% of meat. The rest? Well, you're eating mouthfuls of things like fat, connective tissue, and bone spicules. Many fast food companies grind the meat with that stuff. They make mechanically formed orbs of chicken parts. Why? Perhaps it's because this method is cheaper and more profitable. 
Millions of restaurants worldwide have chicken nuggets on their menu. So scientifically, it's not fair to say all nuggets are made this way, but a lot of studies imply so. The more the meat is processed, the more you lose the good stuff, like vitamin B6 and B12. The bitter truth is that companies add stuff, such as sodium, to the mixed paste. Sodium is added to get a better flavor. It's one of the ingredients that makes nuggets so yummy. Our bodies need sodium, but not too much of it. Unfortunately, most junk food contains more than our bodies can handle. So it might be a safe option to avoid eating these sorts of foods frequently. Chains dip their nuggets into tempura batter and fry them in hydrogenated oil. That's also not a green light regarding health, but this is how they catch the golden tint. They put additional stuff in nuggets. What about grilled chicken? In recent years, we've seen brands highlighting grilled chicken as a healthier option. Research has been done about grilled chicken too. And the same approach is applied here. Take chicken samples from iconic fast food companies and send those to labs for analysis. The results show that companies are misleading people by advertising these products by labeling them as healthy, natural, and 100% chicken breast. In reality, a couple of things are added to the meat to make it tender and juicy. Plus, these additives make it easier to cook the meat, freeze, and transport it, and reheat it later without losing too much moisture. The drawback of all these additives is that they affect the nutritional value of the chicken breast. These ingredients aren't the healthiest for us. We should especially watch out for three things. The first one is again, sodium. Fast food samples had seven to 10 times more sodium than home cooked chicken breast. Imagine you have a cheeseburger, but you say no to yourself and try to pick a less harmful menu item. Yet, some chicken sandwiches have the same amount or even more sodium than a cheeseburger with medium fries. The second thing you need to watch out for is phosphate additives. These additives allow the protein to conjoin more water. This means the white meat in the sandwich will appear juicier to you. Any word you see in the ingredients section that contains FOSS is a phosphate additive, so it's best to avoid them. The last thing you should avoid is sugars and starches, not just in grilled chicken, but pretty much in all fast food products. Oh, that's hard to digest, I admit. Cornstarch, sugar, malt, they come with grilled chicken breast buns, and even some fries have sugar too. Everywhere I look, it's sugar. You see, home-cooked chicken has zero grams of carbs, but the study samples had added sugar and up to 10% of the calories in the chicken breast comes from there. So what's the moral of this story? If you're a health-conscious diner, you should maybe go for other options. There are secret recipes from companies like KFC and Coca-Cola. No company wants to share the ingredients that make their food irresistible, but with a little research, you can decipher many things. You want to know the secret of McDonald's fries? It's written on their website. They add beef flavoring to the frying oil. This may sound weird, but apparently, that's a known practice amongst chefs and restaurants. Duck fat has also been used as a flavor, for example, in high-end restaurants. I'm a fries lover, so I added another fact about fries. Sadly, they're even saltier than you think. Experts suggest that a grown-up should consume at most 2,300 milligrams of sodium daily. Guess the McD's large fry sodium number. At least 400 milligrams. Classic fries from Burger King have 732 milligrams. And Five Guys take the level even higher with 962 milligrams of sodium. Next time, maybe you can ask workers to go easy on the salt as a solution. Picture this, you're in a hurry, but your tummy says, feed me or I'll affect your mood and make life miserable for you. For a quick snack, you enter a fast food chain restaurant. You order your favorite burger. It looks and smells as if it's just been taken from the grill and served. Nope, they have different types of grills designed for this that can cook meat super quickly. Sorry to bear the bad news, but those perfect grill marks on your burger aren't real tools. The factory adds them. If you want to know how clean an eatery is, look under the ice chute of the soda machine in places where you can get your own drink. There you go, inspector. You solved the case. Various studies say that if such machines aren't cleaned correctly, dirty, contaminated ice can lead to some health problems. There could be mold or bacteria there. Ew! The process of cleaning ice machines isn't easy. 
The same thing applies to ice cream machines too. Rumor has it that those ice cream machines aren't out of order. Employers just cannot find time to clean them properly. Now, what's the best time to get a good and fresh meal? Here are two opinions, and they both have solid reasonings. The first team recommends avoiding ordering grilled food in chains from 7 to after midnight. Many former employees say that sometimes they had taquitos or hot dogs prepared at around 4 or 5 a.m., but kept waiting to serve them till around midnight. That's not healthy. The other team says you should order between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. to get the freshest meal. Since it's going to be around lunch and dinner time, there'll be circulation and you can get decent food. Fast food companies have marketing, design, and psychological tricks to lure you in and make you order. Yet, they don't want you to stay inside for too long. If you were dining in mood lighting, you know under dim lamps and candlelight, you would take your time to eat. As the name suggests, you should be fast like your food in chain restaurants. They have fluorescence and they're in full light. Similarly, the floors and tables have reflective surfaces that make food look nice and bright. Plus, music is usually fast and loud. It's done to prevent you from spending hours there. Yet, they want you to take advantage of the first 20 minutes after your purchase. The faster you eat, the longer it will take you to feel full. Scientists say it takes about 20 minutes for our stomachs to inform our brain, okay, now I'm full. It's a good idea to eat in a clean area, but most of these companies are using cleaning products that have super strong chemicals. Assume that the staff clean the place at the end of their shift. They wipe down the soda machine and grill surface, and then you showed up early the next day. You may get some of that chemical residue on your food compared to other customers visiting the place later in the day. The vegan patty may not be 100% vegan, I'm talking about the grill, not the meat itself. In most of the chains, vegan burgers are cooked on the same grill as meat burgers. Do you have fast food chain secrets you want to share? Tell them to fellow Brightsiders in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Flies are everywhere we go. Literally, it's believed that flies originated in Asia, but these days, they live everywhere people live, only excluding Antarctica and maybe a couple of islands. Flies have traveled the oceans following humans, but they never go anywhere alone. In the wilderness and deserts where humans are absent, you won't find any flies. We know them well, but we all have that unanswered question about flies. Why do flies rub their limbs? Turns out, they just clean them. It's this simple. A fly has hair all over its body. The hairs on the limbs serve as detectors for flying, finding food, and doing whatever else the fly business is. They have to keep their limbs clean at all times. So, they just rub them every time they get a chance. Their limbs are sensitive and they serve more than one purpose. Apparently, the limbs have taste receptors, so the flies can taste with their feet. They can land on their potential meal and wander around it, giving it a good taste before consuming it. Flies can't chew, so they're on an all-liquid diet and drink their food. If the food they have picked as their next meal is solid, they have a special ritual to make it edible. A fly regurgitates digestive juices on their soon-to-be food, and those juices break it into the smallest pieces that can be drunk. Also, spitting out those juices frees up space in their stomachs for new food. Quite often, flies sit on our food. They can appear harmless, but it's not exactly true. First, remember that they spill out those juices onto your food, which is already gross enough. But there's more. You have to keep in mind that flies land everywhere, and it's not always flowers, but all the gross stuff as well. And flies especially like that said gross stuff, like rotting foods, dumpsters, and even worse. So, their limbs collect all the germs and microbes from those places. When a fly lands on your food, it transfers those germs to your meal. Some of the microbes they transfer can even cause diseases like cholera and typhoid. There was even an experiment once made to demonstrate how it works. There were two bulls, 
One contained a red powder of some kind of spice, and the other bowl had white rice in it. Flies were let in, and they would migrate from the spice bowl to the rice bowl and back. Soon enough, rice got covered with red spice. Now, replace harmless spice with something grosser, and rice with your dinner. So, you should always cover your food to make sure some fly doesn't take a walk on it and step and spit all over it. If you're eating, make sure you swat them away. But don't worry if some annoying fly manages to sit on your sandwich for a second before you kick it out. No need to throw the sandwich out. If you acted fast, then you're safe. Also, experts say that an average healthy human has a strong enough immune system to repel parasites. Even though flies are gross and annoying, bugging around and tickling you with their limbs, they do serve some good. They're responsible for pollinating flowers. They collect nectar from them, which gets stuck to their hair on their bodies. And then they pollinate the next flower when landing on it. Also, if flies didn't exist, our planet would be even dirtier. Flies recycle some of the human waste. Flies are also an important part of the ecosystem since they're food for birds, spiders, lizards, frogs, and many more. Without flies, they'd all go extinct. Apart from flies having the superpower of tasting with their feet, there are other interesting facts about them too. They can walk on both horizontal and vertical surfaces and even upside down. They can do it because each one of a fly's feet has two pads with tiny hair. And those hairs produce a glue-like substance that allows flies to have an excellent grip. Flies have unique eyes, which have a large complex of 3,000 to 6,000 simpler eyes within each of the two compound eyes. A fly's eyes don't move, but its vision is nearly 360 degrees. They can see behind their back, so wherever you are, a fly definitely sees you and every other danger with one or a few of their thousands of monitors. In addition to the two compound eyes, flies also have three simple eyes located on their foreheads, which serve as a compass and allow a fly to navigate. They also have an amazing reaction time. Ever wondered why it's so hard to swat a fly? Well, to a fly, we're sloths. That's because they see things in slow motion compared to us. Species have different perceptions of speed. The speed we see will be twice faster for a turtle, and it will be four times slower for a fly. Turn a video on at 0.25 times speed and imagine someone approaching you with this speed. Well, that's how a fly sees you. So yes, it has enough time to escape. A fly has just one set of wings. But in addition to their pair of wings, they also have so-called halters, which allow them to take off fast. Millions of years ago, halters were serving as a second pair of wings. Now they help to take off and also to balance the air. If a fly loses one of the halters, it'll start flying in circles. And if both of them go missing, it won't be able to fly anymore at all. Also, even though their wings beat up to 1,000 times per minute, they're also very slow flyers, only reaching the speed of 4.5 miles per hour. If a fly lives in an urban area with enough people and garbage around, it doesn't fly far away from the place of residence, only having a territory of a bit over 3,200 feet. Rural flies are far more explorative, and they can fly away up to 7 miles at a time. A fly doesn't live long. Its lifetime is just around 30 days. But during this time, they lay from 500 to 800 eggs each on average. But it's not 1,000 at once, it's several goes throughout their life, with 75 to 100 eggs at once. The eggs hatch within 24 hours, and it takes a week in total for an egg to turn into a grown fly, and then the cycle continues. In colder climates, this process can take twice as long. A timber fly is the biggest fly species, which lives in Central and South America. They can grow up to 3.15 inches. Also, flies have beds, or more like their favorite spot to stay and sleep. They have a comfy place, somewhere close to their source of food, and they come there to rest at night. If you ever had your house flooded with flies, 
Here are a few tips for you to reduce their population. First, it's important to understand what they're attracted to. They're attracted to other flies and even to the smell of flies living there. And flies have an amazing sense of smell. So if you hosted even one fly, expect to get more guests. If you have any traces of flies, like fly specks, they'll find you too. Make sure to wash your walls and surfaces. Next, flies love garbage and rotting produce. They lay eggs in rotten food and meat, so make sure to keep your food in the fridge, cover it, and keep the trash in tightly sealed containers. And of course, take out the trash regularly. Flies have a sweet tooth, or more like a sweet foot, since they taste with their feet. And they love syrup and other sugary liquids. They're also fond of soda and vinegar. So make sure to keep those stored and always wipe after yourself if you spill something. Lastly, they like to hide and live in dirty and leaky drains. They eat the bacteria from there. So always clear your drains and repair any leaks right away. Also, it'll help to seal all the cracks in your floor, ceiling, and walls if you have any. That's one of their ways to get into the house. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Have you ever wondered why things are the way they are? Like why are there holes in a takeout box? Don't worry, you're about to find out. Beanies with all those fluffy pom-poms are easily the most important accessories of wintertime. Turns out the real reason why they or other hats have pom-poms was not to make a fashion statement in the past. One of the theories says that they were there to provide safety. French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so they wouldn't hit their heads on the walls or low ceilings and hurt themselves if they lost their balance in a rough sea. So it wouldn't be wrong to call pom-poms head bumpers. Ever notice those extra eyelets hiking boots have on their sides? One thing is for sure. Even though it kind of makes sense, they're not there to provide ventilation for your feet so that they don't smell. They're there to prevent your shoes from moving and causing you to slip and fall while you're hiking, climbing, or descending a hill. When you're going on your next adventure, make sure to tie your laces through them to tighten your boots for a better fit. You're at a barbecue party with your friends. The host serves cold drinks and long neck bottles to everyone. You think to yourself, why do bottles have long necks anyway? There are two reasons for that. The first one is to reduce the cost of packaging. The narrower the neck is, the smaller cap you need. And the second reason is to make sure that your drink stays cool longer. When you hold the bottle from its neck, not its body, the heat coming from your hand won't warm up the rest of your drink. The color of plastic tags on bread packages indicates which day of the week the bread was baked. Even though some companies have their own color codes, it generally goes like this. Monday, blue. Tuesday, green. Thursday, red. Friday, white. And Saturday, yellow. So pick accordingly to get the freshest bread. You're feeling too lazy to cook dinner, so you go to your favorite restaurant to order takeout. You come home feeling excited that you're about to have a delicious meal. You open the takeout box only to find out that your food became soggy because of the moisture built up inside of it. Well, this secret purpose is going to help you prevent that from happening ever again. Notice the perforated tabs in the corners of the container's lid? You need to push them down to allow the steam to escape from the holes. If you have a hot meal, that is, If you're one of those lucky people who have a dishwasher at home, you're going to feel even luckier once you learn what else you can wash in it. Aside from making your dishes clean and shiny, it can also clean up your makeup brushes for you. Just place them inside the silverware tray to remove all the dirt and excess product that built up amongst the bristles. You went to the farmer's market and bought some fresh fruits and vegetables. You want to wash the dirt off them, especially potatoes, before placing everything in the fridge. Don't waste your time washing them all one by one. Place them in your dishwasher and set it to the rinsing cycle with cold water. Don't use detergent for this, though. 
Are you one of the many people who use the drawer under their oven or stove as storage? Sorry to inform you, but storing skillets, cookie sheets, and muffin pans is not their purpose. It's called a warming drawer, and it's meant to keep your cooked dishes warm and delicious. So if your guests are running late, just put that casserole you've made in it until they arrive. Keep in mind that not all oven models have this feature. Some drawers are for broiling, and some can indeed be used as storage. Check with the manual to make sure what yours is. Oranges, lemons, and avocados come in mesh bags most of the time. When you go back home from the grocery store, you probably throw those into the trash, don't you? But did you know that you can also use them as a pot scrubber? You just need to tie them up. Then you can get to cleaning those dirty dishes, pots, and pans. You can even turn them into single-use scrubbers for other kitchen appliances or your sink. If you're at a store looking for new hangers to organize your closet, we suggest you buy the ones made of cedar wood instead of plastic ones. First of all, cedar wood acts as a natural repellent. Pests like moths, fleas, lice, silverfish, ants, gnats, and ticks won't come near your clothes and closet if you use them. The second reason why you should invest in them is that they absorb unwanted odors from your clothes as well as moisture. And this feature helps prevent mold, so you can wear your favorite dress or suit for longer. It's that time of week again, Taco Tuesday. You invite a couple of friends over to enjoy some homemade tacos, but even though you have the recipe for making tortillas, you don't know how to give them that perfect taco shell shape. Well, this hidden use might help. If you have a muffin tray at home, then you have all you need. Just flip it upside down and place the small tortillas in between the cups. Bon appetit! If you love sewing and making your own clothes, then you must be used to using those tomato pin cushions, which almost always come with a small strawberry tassel. But why is it there? First of all, you can push the needle you're currently using or your favorite one in there so that you don't need to search for it amongst the other needles all the time. And secondly, it's filled with emery, which will help clean and sharpen your needles once they go in there. Are you a Team Ketchup or Team Mayo? Ketchup fans must have noticed the number 57 on those Heinz ketchup bottles. That number is placed where it is on the bottle for a very specific reason. You must have struggled with getting ketchup out of the bottle at least once in your life, and at that moment, you probably tried shaking it until the right amount of ketchup fell onto your plate, right? Well, no need to do that anymore. Just firmly tap on the spot where 57 is written on the bottleneck, and you can get ketchup out of the bottle way quicker. You might have noticed that there are two holes in an oil can where you are filling it up or pouring it. And you maybe thought to yourself, that must be there to make it easier for me to pour it into smaller containers. But that's not the case. That hole is there to prevent oil from spilling all over, or glugging, so to say. So you need to uncap it before you pour oil from the larger hole to prevent wasting it or having to clean everywhere. Have you ever taken classes to improve your typing speed on a keyboard? If your answer is yes, then you might be disappointed to learn that keyboard manufacturers most likely wanted to slow you down. A popular theory says that's why the letters on a keyboard are arranged randomly and not in alphabetical order. The reason for that goes all the way back to typewriters. Their keys used to be arranged in alphabetical order, which allowed people to write really fast. And because of that, the keys would jam and tangle up easily, and they wanted to avoid that. That's how we ended up having the Q-wordy keyboards we have today. Here's a bonus hidden feature for you before you leave. The clock app on your iPhone shows you what time it is on the little screen icon as well. So, Alexander the Great, one of the most famous figures in ancient history, was apparently a big fan of one summer treat beloved by many to this day. Marco Polo, the Italian explorer and writer, is said to have brought back from Asia a recipe resembling sorbet, a frozen dessert made by mixing sugar-sweetened water with different types of flavoring. 
This dessert, which was later named cream ice, was a frequent treat at the court of Charles I of England in the 17th century. In France, it was Catherine de' Medici who introduced the beloved frozen dessert soon after she married Henry II. The frozen treat became available for the general public somewhere in the 1660s, when a Sicilian man blended milk, cream, butter, and eggs at Café Procope, the first known café in Paris. Thomas Jefferson himself had a preferred recipe for ice cream, which took a staggering 18 steps to complete. Ice cream has become so important in popular culture that it even has its own laws and regulations to accompany it, to make sure ice cream is always produced with its certain levels of quality. Not every frozen dessert you see out there is, in fact, ice cream. To be commercialized under this name, the Icy Delight needs to contain a minimum of 10% dairy milk fat and mustn't weigh less than 4.5 pounds per gallon. Genuine ice cream doesn't actually need to be too fluffy. In technical terms, that means it must have no more than 100% overrun. So, to get to that specific texture we've all come to know and love, the ice cream base needs to be sufficiently whipped, but only to a certain percentage. Specifically, for every gallon of ice cream base, the end products must not exceed 2 gallons after whipping. Your favorite summer dessert can yet again be broken down into many other subcategories, like reduced fat ice cream, low fat ice cream, or non fat ice cream, based on what do you think? Fat percentage. To have a solid idea of what you're ordering each time, it's best to look at the nutritional information of each product. One interesting type of frozen dessert is gelato. Although it literally translates to ice cream in Italian, there are differences between the two again based on regulations on milk fat content. Gelato normally has less milk fat than ice cream officially should have, but since it has a low overrun, about 20-30%, to the end result is still dense and rich in texture. The Italians also mention that gelato shouldn't have less than 3.5% of fat. If this doesn't seem complicated enough, the French also bring their own twist to the dessert. French ice cream, also known as frozen custard, apart from the standard ingredients, also needs to have eggs added to the mixture, with no less than 1.4% egg yolk. You've probably mislabeled many other food items, like say raspberries, as they're actually a member of the rose family, along with cherries, apricots, plums, pears, apples, peaches, or blackberries. They are added to this category based on their flowers. They bloom in five equal petals arranged around a central core. Bananas are considered berries, while strawberries aren't since they belong to the same rose family. We also share about 50% of our DNA with bananas, which explains why both bananas and certain attractive people can both have appeal. Another common misconception, white chocolate isn't actually chocolate since it doesn't contain any chocolate solids. It's made only from a mixture of sugar, milk products, vanilla, lecithin, and cocoa butter. Parents all over the world don't try to convince their kids to eat broccoli for no reason. On a calorie-by-calorie -calorie basis, it turns out that broccoli has nearly as much protein in it as a steak. Now, I'm not convinced parents actually know that, but given the low-fat content, broccoli has many other health benefits as opposed to meat. We now see it as the mandatory companion for fries, but at some point in time, ketchup was actually considered to have healing properties. In the 1880s, a doctor based in Ohio indicated that tomatoes could help treat digestive issues, publishing a ketchup-like formula that was later transformed into a pill. Hey, you want to have a pill with those fries? Speaking of french fries, it turns out one of the most popular side dishes in the world isn't actually French. Potatoes served this way actually originated in Belgium, but they're called that because of how they're cut. And maybe also because the name Brussels sprouts was already taken. I'm almost certain there's a jar of peanut butter somewhere in your cupboard. But I'll bet you didn't know how valuable it actually was. And I'm not talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Studies have shown that Americans go through enough peanut butter to coat the floor of the Grand Canyon each year. Just to be a bit more precise here, that's about 500 million pounds. Hey, if somebody did that on YouTube, I'd watch. The pink coloring of salmon isn't always like that by default. Wild salmon is pink due to a large amount of shrimp they consume natively. 
farm-raised salmon, however, is generally white, so producers need to add plant-based pigments to get that light pink hue. Carrots weren't originally orange either. The red-yellow tint we are now familiar with comes from a genetic mutation of the well-known vegetable that occurred somewhere in the 16th century. Carrots were initially white or purple. Just like you add ketchup to the side of fries, you're most likely having a dab of wasabi with every plate of sushi. Well, it's most certainly dyed horseradish. The Japanese alternative to horseradish is quite expensive. That's why 99% of restaurants in the U.S. actually use regular horseradish instead. You may see them packed together in the supermarket, but red, green, and yellow peppers aren't actually the same vegetable. You'd need different types of seeds to be able to grow them individually, as they're each their own type of plant species. Did you know one in four hazelnuts ends up in a Nutella jar? The creamy spread is so popular that scientists are looking into ways to grow hazelnuts in labs to counteract the global shortage. That's something to think about when you ask for an extra topic. Sure, there's an expiration date on each bottle of water, but the water itself doesn't actually expire. The date mentioned there is, in fact, for the bottle itself, since the plastic can eventually leak harmful substances into the water. Ever wondered why airplane food sometimes tastes bland? The chef may not always be to blame. The altitude you're flying at has some effects on your body chemistry, making you taste things differently. You've added it to a salad at least once, but you may be surprised to know that cilantro and coriander are not, in fact, the same thing. Coriander is what the dried seeds are called, while the leaves and the stems go by cilantro. So now you know. For all the fruit lovers out there, scientists came up with a fruit salad tree. Yep, that's right, a tree that can grow different types of fruit at the same time. They were developed in Australia and can support up to six different types of fruit. There's a stone fruit variation that features peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, and peach cots, and a citrus variation for those who prefer lemons, limes, mandarins, oranges, or even tangelos, pomelos, and grapefruits. You most likely avoid it because it can give you bad breath. But garlic is considered one of the most nutrient-dense foods out there. A single clove of garlic can contain 2% of your vitamin B6 for the whole day. Studies have shown that the chemical that gives garlic its distinctive flavor, called allicin, is good for your health. The only type of food that never spoils when stored properly is honey. Or at least, the only one we've discovered so far. That's because it contains a high amount of sugar and has a low moisture content. An enzyme created by bees also helps do the trick, as it can suppress any bacterial growth. Of course, if you store your honey the wrong way and expose it to additional moisture, it can go bad. But honey that is sealed and stored correctly technically has no expiration date. Now, if you're just starting out with your cooking skills, you'll be pleased to know mushrooms can't be overcooked. That's because they contain a polymer called chitin. This chemical allows them to remain tender, even if you cook them from a few minutes to up to an hour. Hey, just add some butter and garlic. Nobody will ever know. Many people try to store different types of food in the fridge, just in case. It seems like the smartest decision to extend a product's lifespan. But it's not that simple. For some foods, the fridge can be harmful. For example, sauces. If the package doesn't say otherwise, it's better to keep them outside the fridge. You can put them in a cupboard that is far from your oven to protect sauces from temperature changes. The worst enemy of coffee beans is moisture. Special oil in coffee beans is responsible for that pleasant and cozy coffee smell. When you place your coffee in the fridge, condensation changes its entire cell structure and makes all the magic disappear. But if your goal is to get off caffeine, maybe it is a good idea to store your beans in the cold. Rumor has it that honey is an immortal food. You can store it almost forever, but make sure to do it properly. Keep honey in a cold and dark place, but don't put it in your fridge. Otherwise, it may crystallize and lose some of its major beneficial properties. Putting tomatoes into the fridge seems pretty harmless, but it's not the best idea. It will make tomatoes lose their delicious flavor because cold air slows down the natural ripening process. Thus, the thin membranes inside of the tomatoes get less juicy. And you don't want your salad to be watery and tasteless, do you? 
The best way to store tomatoes is in a well-ventilated box or basket at room temperature. If you want to keep sliced bananas from getting brown, use citrus juice. Just drizzle orange or lemon juice over the cut bananas. Unfortunately, this trick only works for a few hours. The perfect way to store your chocolate is inside your stomach. Ah, just kidding. Keep it away from the fridge and store it in a cool, dark place. This way, you don't only protect your dessert from your sweet tooth roommates, but also keep its attractive appearance. It's not a good idea to put your chocolate in the fridge because the temperature difference will create some condensed water on the surface of the chocolate bar. And keeping it away from the fridge is safer for your teeth. Chocolate tends to harden at low temperatures, which makes each bite more difficult. Don't keep your hummus at room temperature. It doesn't matter whether it's homemade or pasteurized. In both cases, it's not safe. If the hummus is traditional and doesn't contain any preservatives, its lifespan is up to one week. As for unopened supermarket hummus, you can store it in your fridge for about three months and for one week once you've opened it. Let's say you've just baked the perfect cookies. It's time to put them in a jar or container. Unfortunately, the cookies will eventually lose that precious out-of-the-oven feel and keep getting harder and harder as the days go by. But if you add a slice of bread to that same container, the cookies will keep their soft texture for much longer. That's because cookies will absorb moisture from the bread. People usually wrap cheese in plastic packages, but this solution is far from perfect. Plastic wrap attracts too much moisture, which creates an ecosystem for mold to grow and prosper. If you want to protect your cheese from this bitter scenario, sprinkle it with vinegar. But don't use more than a few drops. Otherwise, it'll ruin the original taste of your cheese. After that step, wrap your cheese tightly in wax paper and put it in the fridge. There are no special rules about eggs. It's safe to store them both inside and outside the fridge, as long as their expiration date is fine. It's important to make sure the temperature is stable and consistent. If your choice is to put eggs in the fridge, don't keep them on the side shelf. To protect them from temperature fluctuations, put the eggs deeper in the fridge. Also, experts don't recommend removing the eggs from their package. These containers are actually meant to extend the lifespan of the eggs. Yes, the temperature is not equal all over your fridge. The shelves on the door are the warmest area, for example. And the closer the shelf is to the freezer, the lower the temperature gets. So, if you want to create perfect food distribution inside your fridge, don't skip the specific storage recommendations that are mentioned on some packages. If you store a loaf of bread in the supermarket package, get ready to see some mold in a couple of days. It's better to keep your bread in a firmly closed box with a little bit of salt. This tip will protect it from the mold. Also, avoid keeping bread in the fridge because cold air will make it stale very quickly. But when you need to save bread for a long time, you can put it in the freezer. This way, it'll stay fresh for up to six months. If you want to keep sliced cucumbers from drying out, put them in an airtight container and pour fresh water in it. Don't store them in the fridge for more than a week. As for the whole cucumbers, keep in mind that they rot in the cold air way faster than at room temperature. If you want to keep them fresh for as long as possible, store them outside the fridge. Avocado is a tricky fruit with tricky storage rules. If your avocado is hard and not fully ripe yet, keep it away from the fridge because cold air will slow down the ripening process. Bananas emit high levels of ethylene, which helps avocados ripen faster. So if you want to accelerate the process, put it in a bag with one or several bananas. At the same time, if your avocado is soft and ripe, storing it in the fridge will keep it from going bad. Some people prefer wrapping cut avocado in plastic wrap together with a slice of onion. This tip helps the fruit to stay fresh longer. Another way is to cover it with olive oil. Keep in mind that cut avocado can be stored in the fridge for no longer than three days. Keep your onions and garlic away from the fridge. Low temperatures will cause mold way faster. If you want to keep them fresh for a long time, store them in a cool, dry place. For example, in the kitchen cupboard. And if you don't mind some country house style in your kitchen, tie the onions to one another and keep them hanging. Also, avoid storing oranges and other citrus fruits in the fridge. Unfortunately, low temperatures make these fruits less tasty and less beneficial for your health. You can store them in a fruit bowl on a shelf or kitchen table. Don't worry, this won't speed up their rotting. 
Just like many other vegetables, eggplants don't like low temperatures. In the fridge, they get soft and lose their good qualities way faster. Keep these veggies away from direct sunlight in some dry space at room temperature. If you've sliced an apple, but you don't want to eat it right away, here's a tip. Put a rubber band around the slices to hold them together. It'll keep the apple from turning brown. This fruit will stay fresh and crispy for as long as a whole month when stored in a moisture-resistant bag in a fridge. It's advised to avoid washing apples before storing them, as it might cause spoilage. Never put olive oil inside your fridge. If you've made this mistake before, you've probably noticed those weird white pieces inside the oil. Don't worry, it's not toxic. In fact, low temperatures in the fridge cause water condensation, which looks like unpleasant impurities. It's better to keep your olive oil at room temperature and far from direct sunlight. Watermelons and other melons kept at room temperature contain more beneficial nutrients and antioxidants compared to those kept in the fridge. But once you cut your watermelon, it's better to store it in the fridge. Use plastic wrap to cover the cut side tightly and replace it each time you cut your watermelon. Also, you can cut your melon or watermelon in smaller slices and store them in an airtight container in your fridge for up to one week. Freezing ginger will allow you to keep it fresh for two to nine months and maintain its quality. You can also grate it in advance so you can take one spoonful at a time. This will save you time, especially on those busy days when you need to prepare something fast. You're about to go into an interview for your dream job. As you wait in the lobby, you realize you are so nervous in the morning that you forgot to eat breakfast. Now you're so hungry, you could eat a horse. Luckily, you are smart enough to pack some food in case you started starving. You open the bag of cheese puffs you brought, but then you realize, how are you going to eat these without getting cheesy orange dust all over your fingers and your nice outfit? Clever people on the internet have engineered the perfect genius solution. If you're not afraid of being a little unconventional, you can save your fingers from getting dust coated by using a pair of chopsticks. They're long enough to reach down into the bag, so you can keep your hand safely outside of the cheesy, dusty abyss. But when you were opening the bag, a tear appeared on its side. The more you move it, the more the tear grows. You have to be careful because any further and your nice clothes will be covered in chip dust. Thankfully, the solution is just within reach. You spot a hole punch on the lobby desk. Using it, you can punch a hole in the bottom of the tear and stop it in its tracks. The round hole distributes force evenly, making a roadblock that helps prevent the bag from further ripping. Those tips are great, but they won't help you with the other chips you brought, which come in a tube. Luckily for that kind of packaging, all you need is a piece of printer paper. Curl it up and slip it into the tube around the chips. Now you can slide the entire stack out easily, opening the paper once it's out for a mess-free tray. As you're happily crunching away, you look around, suddenly aware that you're being very loud. You need to make a good first impression here after all. Good thing science has some answers on how to be quieter when eating one of the crunchiest snacks of all. Press each chip against the roof of your mouth using your tongue. The softness of your tongue will help to suppress the crunching noise. Curved shaped chips are especially engineered to make the loudest crunch sound. So the best way to muffle the noise is to get rid of the shape first, then eat the chip as usual. But be warned, science has also claimed that eating your favorite crunchy snacks without hearing the iconic sound may mean you won't enjoy them as much. A professor of experimental psychology at Oxford University conducted a curious experiment. It showed that people's perception of flavor and taste are influenced not only by how food looks, but also by how it sounds. He had 20 participants eat chips while wearing headphones. He immersed their ears in crunching sounds at different volume levels and frequencies. Even though the chips they were munching on were all identical, the participants who were listening to louder, high-pitched crunches actually thought their chips were fresher and crispier. After all those salty snacks, you could go for a creamy treat. Through the window, you see there's an ice cream truck parked right outside. Perfect! You sneak a look at the clock. There's still plenty of time until your interview. Ice cream, here you come. You scan the menu on the truck. Obviously, a soft-serve cone is way too risky. You can see it already. 
the slow drip melting down your hand right onto your nice clothes. Okay, no cone. So how about an ice cream sandwich? It's designed to keep you protected from sticky spills. And you're right, it is a good option. Outside will warm up under your body heat, becoming tacky and sticky to your skin. We all know the chocolatey cookie goo that's left on our fingers, no matter how carefully we try to hold the sandwich as we eat. Adding a graham cracker on either side of the cookies will help you stay clean and pristine. Plus, it turns our regular ice cream sandwich into an upgraded cold s'more. It's an ice cream sandwich sandwich. As you're heading back inside, you spot another food truck, this one selling burritos. Well, you have lots of time and you're still pretty hungry. You order all your favorite fillings. When they hand you your order, you notice the burrito is wrapped in a second tortilla. This is a common, genius thing for restaurants to do. And while a lot of people don't know why, it can actually help you stay clean. While eating, unwrap the second tortilla and lay it open on a plate. Lean over it with each bite. Since burritos are notoriously good at dropping more of their filling than they keep in, this trick was devised to make the most of it. Anything that drops out will land on the second tortilla, which you can then wrap up into a second burrito when you're done with the first. This is the same reason packaged tortillas are often sold in even numbers. A delicious smell wafts from down the street. A stand selling corn on the cob. That pairs perfectly with a burrito. But there's no food that gets stuck in your teeth like corn. You didn't bring any floss, and it'd be so embarrassing to go into the interview with a yellow kernel in your teeth. Luckily, you can have your corn and eat it too. Just use a chopstick. Skewer the corn kernels with it, going horizontally along a row. Then use one hand braced against the cob and pull the other end away. You will have a stack of juicy corn that you can eat right off the stick, avoiding any fibers between your teeth. Genius! Back inside, you check the time. There's still plenty of it. And you've managed to stay completely clean and perfectly presentable for your interview. A fruit bowl sits on the receptionist's desk with a sign that says, complimentary. You grab a wonderfully ripe kiwi. But this is an office building, so there are no spoons lying anywhere. Plus, cutting the fruit open and scooping the middle out can get really juicy. That's no worry though, because that's not the only way of eating a kiwi. Some kiwi enthusiasts suggest that the best way is to actually eat the fruit whole, just biting into it like an apple. The kiwi fruit skin is completely edible and is packed with additional nutrients. A recent study shows that eating the skin can triple the fiber intake compared to just eating the flesh. Plus, this way, you're not losing out on the vitamin C boost that it can give. The skin contains high concentrations of nutrients, especially fiber, folate, and vitamin E. Supposedly, eating the skin of a kiwi can increase its fiber content by up to 50%. If you can't handle the fuzzy texture, try rubbing the fruit against a pair of jeans. The friction created by the denim will easily remove the fuzz, making the fruit much more palatable. Try it out! Not only will you be less likely to be sprayed with sticky juice, but you might also get more nutritious bang for your buck. Oh, wow. you just remembered that you packed a sandwich for lunch in the morning. Might as well have it now. But all that mustard and barbecue sauce there has to be a way to hold sandwiches to make sure they make the least mess, right? Good news, there is. Sandwiches are best eaten with a claw handshape. Hold the burger so that your thumbs and pinkies are on the bottom, leaving your other three fingers over the top of the bun. This positioning works like a clamp, holding all the ingredients in place. This way, you can take bites without worrying about half of the sandwich ending up on your lap. Well, after all that food, you're thirsty. The coffee maker in the corner is calling your name, but bringing it back to your seat without a spill is a test of agility that only a person with perfect balance can manage. Actually, you just need to understand a bit of physics. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to walk with a cup of coffee without spilling it? It's because the length of a person's stride has almost exactly the right frequency to create rolling waves in a typical sized coffee mug. Each step rocks the liquid more, and it gets closer and closer to the mug's lip. Spills are most common between your 7th and 10th steps. 
We often try to walk quickly with our cups so that we can get to our destination before it spills over. But it turns out that the faster you walk, the closer your gait comes to the natural sloshing frequency of coffee. To avoid creating the waves that lead to spillage, walk slowly. Finally, it's time for your interview. Good thing you've kept completely clean while eating. You head towards the meeting room. On a table right outside, there are free powdered jelly donuts for everyone. How nice! A donut would be the best after that cup of coffee. Uh-oh, you're so distracted you don't notice your untied shoelace and go flying into the table. Donuts fly up and land right into your lap. So much for a good first impression. The national Jamaican fruit, Aki, has a truly unique taste. It's mild and buttery, and people who tried it say it tastes just like scrambled eggs. It's safe to eat Aki only as long as it's fully ripe. So the import of raw Aki's was banned in the U.S. almost 50 years ago. The only edible part is the white, creamy flesh itself. The pink flesh looks mouthwatering, but don't fall for it. It's highly toxic. Same with the black seeds. Soursop is one more fruit banned from the U.S. because of its toxins. It's also referred to as guanabana and can release toxic substances, leading to some very unpleasant effects if not ripe. Soursop fans, don't be sad. Chances are you might find some frozen pulp in supermarkets. Another thing that should be 100% ripe to be safe is elderberry. Raw elderberry is rich in vitamin C, which is good for you, and cyanide, which is not that good. These berries are quite popular though. You can find them in pies, syrups, teas, jams, you name it. Fully ripe and cooked berries aren't dangerous. And nope, it's not banned. Cyanide doesn't seem that serious when it comes to food with tetrodotoxin, which is 1,200 times stronger. Pufferfish is a Japanese delicacy, and it's loaded with the substance. No person can eat this fish without consequences, but Japanese chefs have mastered their skills to perfection. To make it edible, they simply remove the poisonous parts. This delicacy is called fugu and costs about $200 per portion. You could buy a whole bunch of totally safe salmon instead. It's almost completely banned in the US. There are only a few authorized places that sell it, but you probably don't feel like having such a gastronomic adventure either way. Kasu marzu literally means rotten cheese. Sorry, you can't try a bite of it in the US. So in case you can't resist the temptation, just head to the island of Sardinia, Italy. In fact, it's just sheep milk cheese with a pinch of, mm, let's say, magic. Special flies leave their eggs right inside that cheese, and they stay there for 40 days. At the moment it's ready for consumption, this cheesy delicacy has some live maggots taking care of decomposing it. Thanks to them, the cheese has that distinctive texture and spicy flavor. It's banned in the US for sanitary reasons. Unlike soft and creamy kasu marzu, the Himalayan cheese Chirpy is famous for being the world's hardest. Just like any regular product of this type, it's made from milk. What makes it different is that it stays fresh for up to 20 years. The milk is quite special too. The cows, which are actually a cross between cows and yaks, eat a variety of mountain herbs. This milk has a unique flavor thanks to those herbs. But be careful with your teeth nibbling on that hard as stone cheese. In Singapore, you'll never have cavities because of chewing gum. And nope, it's not because they take care of your teeth. The thing is, it's completely illegal there. This place is known for its cleanliness, and the country spent a fortune cleaning all the spots and banning chewing gum. It was prohibited back in 1992, and vendors had to stop the sales immediately to avoid super high fines. Walking down the supermarket aisles while traveling to different destinations, you may spot that there's no raw milk in stock. It's prohibited in many U.S. states and other countries, including Canada, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and Scotland, for sanitary reasons. While raw milk is a no-go for Scotland, haggis is completely fine there. Still, it's banned in the U.S. If you live in the States and you're under 45, chances are you've never tried haggis, since it was prohibited almost half a century ago. 
This Scottish pudding is made of a full range of sheep's inner parts, mixed with some oatmeal and spiced up with a bunch of minced onions. Oh, and don't forget suet and some broth. The texture is crumbly and coarse, and no surprise, the dish is quite spicy. It's usually served with mashed potatoes or mashed turnip. Cassava is a poisonous tropical root with two types. The sweet variation does contain some cyanide, but it's enough to cook it to reduce the toxic content to a non-toxic level. To get rid of all the toxins in bitter cassava, it's necessary to grate the root, then soak it, and finally cook properly to make it edible. This root is very starchy, and its flavor is really subtle. Cassava can be used just like potatoes, mashed, boiled, or fried. What do you think? How about some haggis with mashed cassava instead of potatoes on the side? By the way, harmless potatoes aren't that safe either. It all depends on whether it's ripe or not. So-called green potatoes are full of toxins, and potato sprouts are also quite unsafe. Same with green almonds and cashews, which are full of cyanide if not ripe enough. Luckily, the nuts we get at the supermarket are well-processed, which means they're completely safe. Yellow plums, or Mirabelle plums, are banned in all the 50 states of America. These fruits are completely fine, and nothing bad happens if you eat them. But you can only enjoy these plums in Lorraine, France. The importation law is a bit bizarre, and this fruit is of protected origin. If sea bass is the kind of dish you just can't live without, then the UK isn't your destination. This fish has been recently banned there because of declines in the sea bass population. The same goes with beluga caviar in the US. One of the world's most expensive foods can't be found in America because of new regulations protecting the fish. Hey, feel like a burger with freshly cooked meat, the softest bun, and loads of ketchup? Go and grab it, unless you're a French school student. There's a law in France regulating the use of ketchup in cafeterias for students, and they're only allowed to have it with, you guessed it, French fries. Greenland shark bodies get rid of all the waste they produce, filtering it through their flesh and skin, so no wonder their flesh is toxic. Sounds like a fair reason not to eat them, but not in Iceland. Hakarl, which is processed shark meat, is first hung to dry for three to five months. In the end, you get something like ammonia-smelling fermented fish with the jelly texture that reminds you of wet bread. Some things get better with age, unless it's food. But there's one cafe in Bangkok where they've been cooking the same beef and noodle soup for 45 years. This potion-like soup has been simmering for over four decades. The broth has never been thrown away, and it's always kept overnight for the next day's servings. One of the secrets of the unique flavor is the massive grease rim around the pan that formed because they never washed it. Okay, now I've got the perfect excuse to do the same thing. What? The food just tastes better this way. In Cambodia, you can try a crunchy, crispy snack that tastes somewhat like a crab. It's deep fried and a bit seasoned. The main ingredient is a tarantula. Uh, this doesn't quite sound like a lunch. Okay, well, you wouldn't have guessed it if I hadn't told you. This soup that sounds like a tongue twister is definitely scrumptious. The flavor is sharp, yet delicate, and it tastes just like shrimp. Well, this traditional Laotian dish sounds really cool, until you realize it's made of ant eggs. To give it a bit of sourness, they also tend to add a few tiny ants. In Mexico, you don't throw away corn kernels that have turned black because they're rotten. You keep them as a culinary specialty called huitlacoche. Fungus all over the kernel give that earthy, woody smell. Yum, yum. Some dishes just need decoration, especially cakes and pies. In England, there's a pie called stargazy. The name speaks for itself. The sardines, accompanied by potatoes and eggs, peek out of the pie's crust and stare at the skies. And it looks a bit creepy. Sometimes it's the tails that point at the skies, though. Tea mushroom is another weird thing that they drink in Eastern Europe, together with acid milk-based drinks. It's basically some fermented black or green tea. It's made by adding a whole culture of bacteria. They're not consumed, they just ferment the drink. To sweeten tea, the sugar acts like yeast. Add juice, spice, or whatever you want to taste. Enjoy!
or at least try to. Tuna eyeballs are quite a popular delicacy in China and Japan. They need to be boiled before eating, and some seasoning is required too. If you nail it, you'll have a delicacy that tastes like squid. And it 